You're listening to the Frequency and Flow podcast with Brie Couric, episode number 46. In this episode, I'm going to be going into and sharing what the human design pressure centers are and how they impact you and your business. This is the first episode of a six episode podcast series I'm calling The Pressurized Soulpreneur. In this series, I'm going to be discussing and contemplating the impact that these pressure centers can have at different stages of your soulpreneur's journey, from initial business idea to scaling your business, and how you can recognize these pressures and manage them in relation to your own intuition. So let's dive in. It's no secret that the world around you continues to get noisier and noisier. Everyone (laughs) wants to tell you what to do. There's examples of this in diet culture, in fashion, when it comes to your career, how to raise your kids, and definitely when it comes to how to build and grow your online business. I was recently chatting with one of my clients about some of these common tropes that we hear in the online space. Things like quit your job and go all in, invest and hire before you're ready. TikTok is the only way to grow your business right now, or it's the best way to grow your business. Like all of these things that you constantly hear that are constant tropes that come up in that noise that we're surrounded by every day. These tropes can not only be a general solution to what is actually a personalized problem of what to do in your business, but they can also be damaging to the people who hear them and think that they are the ultimate truth. While some of these tropes can be innocuous, they can also create a slippery slope and become quite damaging. Why is this? Because when you start to hear something enough, Even if it goes against your intuition and what your intuition is actually telling you, after a while, you start to question your intuition and you start to question what your truth actually is. Yes, you know, what you're hearing may validate what you already believe to be true. And yes, it might teach you something new and it might help you evolve your truth. Or if that pressure is great enough for long enough, it can begin to override your intuition and what it's telling you. You know, then suddenly at some point you can end up in financial trouble because you quit your day job for your business with no backup plan, or you resent your entire marketing strategy, which makes you want to blow everything up. We are constantly bombarded with pressure, telling us how to think and how to act. And honestly, there's I there's no way to escape it, really. I mean, you can you can create boundaries between the media that you're consuming, but there's always going to be that noise there. How do you deal with this? You can discern and become aware about what is right for you as a means of managing that pressure. You can discern what that external pressure is and what is your intuition you know, and use that awareness to take incremental steps forward by trusting that intuition first. That way you can take sustainable but impactful steps forward in your business while staying centered and grounded and owning your purpose without all of that drama (laughs) along the way that comes when you ignore or override your intuition. And I only call it drama (laughs) because I personally used to be the queen of professional drama, the cycles of emotional highs and lows, the fluctuations that dictate the relative success of your business. I've done and seen it all probably. And so I say drama in a very lovingly way because it's something that I've gone through myself. So let's look at this pressure from a human design perspective. So the way that energy flows in your human design chart As you may or may not know, in human design, there are nine centers from the head center all the way at the top of your chart, and then all the way to the root center at the very bottom. There's your Ajna, your throat center, your G center, your heart or ego center, 
your sacral center, emotional solar plexus, your solar, your sacral center, right? There's nine centers. So energy flows into these centers, you know, from the ethers or from the universe into your head center and from the earth or your surroundings into your root center. And all of this ener external energy flowing into you and within you, ultimately it's trying to be released through your center for self-expression and manifestation, which is your throat center. So this flow of energy is impacted by things such as your definition, your environment, and the cosmic transits. And it like when we get to those layers, it can be a little bit complex. And that's maybe a different topic for a different podcast episode. But in general, what you need to know for today is that the flow of energy is universal no matter who you are and what your human design is. You have these two pressure centers at your head, the top of your head, and your root at the bottom. And these are pressure points. These are where the energy from the universe and the energy from the earth come into your body, flow around your body, and they create pressure. They create pressure on you because this energy wants to move within you and come out through your throat center. And your throat center is the center, like I said, for manifestation. So it's really like the energy comes in through you to be manifested out into this physical world. These two centers, these pressure centers, your head and your root, impact everything you do and impact you. And I'm going to explain in a second by, by looking at these. But these are very, very important and I think often under-discussed when it comes to people talking about human design. So let's look at these pressure centers individually. First, the head center. So the head center represents your relationship to ideas and inspiration. It also represents the pressure to think, to ask questions, and to figure it all out. <laughs> if you have your head center defined, which is actually a relatively small percentage of the population, but if you have the center defined, you experience this pressure consistently and continuously. You always have the pressure to ask questions, to determine the answers. You probably are consistently feeling the pressure to come up with new ideas, and you're probably consistently channeling new ideas and inspiration. And you probably constantly have that pressure consistently to figure everything out. And while this pressure is consistent and constant, because you experience it consistently, you probably also have consistent ways that you can manage it and process it. And if you haven't already, like you can develop those ways to process it. On the other hand, if you have this head center undefined, which like I said, is about 70% of the population has this undefined, you will experience this pressure inconsistently. It'll depend on your environment, it'll depend on who you're around, and it'll depend on the cosmic transits. So not only will you experience this pressure inconsistently, the way that you experience it will also be inconsistent. You'll experience it in a variety of different ways that might be confusing or hard to identify, and that is very normal. Now, before you go about thinking that inconsistency is a bad thing, let me tell you that inconsistency is actually probably the greatest source of wisdom for you that you can use in your life and your relationships. That inconsistency is what creates that deep, deep wisdom because you have these all these different experiences of this pressure. So what are some signs that you're experiencing this pressure? Perhaps you're feeling scattered or overwhelmed by ideas and inspiration and you don't really know how to take action or you don't know what action to take first. Perhaps you're asking a lot of questions and you feel the urgency of getting everything answered. Every question you have, you feel like you just have to get it answered. You can't live in the suspense. Or perhaps you feel the pain of not knowing it all. <laughs> and you feel that pressure that you need to figure it all out with your mind right now. Or perhaps you just, you know, it, it could just be that force. Like you feel that force through your mind and through your thoughts. You feel like you have to figure it out. You feel like you just need to think through things a little bit more and you'll begin to figure things out. Or if you think a little bit harder, you'll get the inspiration and you'll get the ideas that you're looking for. So if you're feeling this pressure, whether it's defined or undefined, you know, your center is defined or undefined, 
how can you begin to release it or alleviate it? It's really important for you to just become aware to the fact that you are experiencing this pressure in the first place. When you feel yourself asking all those questions, when you feel yourself mentally trying to figure it all out, when you, anytime you feel this pressure, just become aware to the fact that you're experiencing it. When you begin to experience it, it's really important for you to change your environment. You know, maybe put yourself in a different setting, meet up with a friend, or, you know, what's really effective that I've noticed for myself is to move my body to release some of that stuck energy. When you're feeling that pressure intensely, that means the energy stuck. And so for me personally, just moving my body helps alleviate some of that mental pressure. The next thing that will help release this pressure is to take a moment to meditate or to be intentional about clearing your mind as best as you can. You know, and this works especially well after you move your body a little bit and you move that, you know, let that energy move and get that pressure unstuck a little bit. You know, try to just take a moment to clear your mind or sit in clearness in your mind as best that you can. And then from there, the last tip that I have is to allow yourself to just live in the question. Okay, this is much easier said than done. This is definitely a practice, but telling yourself that you just don't have to have everything figured out right now and trust that that is right for you. Trust that the answers and the ideas and the inspiration will unfold in perfect timing. This is a practice, this last tip to just let yourself live in the question. But as soon as you allow that question to just exist, it does alleviate the pressure. All right, moving on to the root center. So the root center represents your relationship to time and your personal evolution. The root center is pressure to take action, to move and to evolve. If you have the center defined, you are going to experience this pressure consistently and continuously. You're always going to have that pressure to be and to do things better, and to take action, to take lots of action, to make things happen. (laughs) This is very action-oriented, right? This is very much about doing and taking action, this root center. And so if you have the center defined, you probably are going to have this feeling of pressure, like I said, to do the next thing and to jump into the next action, to move ahead and to get things done. And you probably almost always, if not always, have the pressure of time motivating you. Like you feel the pressure of time. And while this pressure is constant, just like with the defined head center, because you experience it consistently, you're probably going to have consistent ways that you can manage it and process it. If you have the root center undefined, you're going to experience this pressure of time and to get things done inconsistently. So it's going to depend on your environment. It's going to depend on who you've surrounded yourself with, and it's going to depend on the cosmic transits. So not only will you experience this pressure inconsistently, the way that you experience it will also be inconsistent. Just like that undefined head center, I want to remind you again that before you go thinking inconsistency is a bad thing, let me remind you that inconsistency is actually the greatest source of wisdom and experiencing wisdom that helps you understand this pressure in a multifaceted, deeper way. So what are the signs that you're experiencing this root center pressure? Uh, You might be feeling like you're late, like you're behind, like you're missing a window of opportunity if you don't meet a deadline, even if that deadline is (laughs) self-imposed. You might feel like you just need to shake things up because you feel stagnant. You know, the, the greatest fear or the greatest like knife in the heart to someone with this root center pressure is feeling like you're not making any progress, that you're stagnant. It almost might feel like you have too much space or you're bored and you need something like quote unquote something to keep you busy. You're looking for that feeling of not just being busy, but feeling like you're progressing in some way. You might also take action without really thinking about if it's the right action for you. You kind of just react and take action without thinking because taking action feels better 
than sitting with the space or having that space. Like you feel like you just need to take action because at least you're doing something. You might also feel the pain of losing time or of not hitting your goals in the timeline that you had hoped or planned for. Like that pain of of falling behind in terms of time is, is really strong. And what this truly is, is just force through your actions and your reactions. If you're feeling like force in terms of like, you feel the pressure that you need to take action. If you're, if it feels, if taking action feels forceful, that means you're experiencing this pressure. So how do you alleviate and release this root center pressure? It's really important to become aware to the fact that you are experiencing it. Just like the head center, this awareness, you know, feeling those signs and symptoms that you're experiencing this pressure is the very first step. And if you are experiencing this, I want you to ask yourself, is this a real timeline that I'm working against or is this an arbitrary timeline that I'm putting on myself? Is the stress now worth the end result? This is something that personally really resonates with me because I put arbitrary timelines on myself all the time and create stress that is completely disproportionate to like what I'm working towards because of this root center pressure. So I resonate with this quite a lot. And I always have to ask myself, okay, is this a real timeline or is this just me putting this timeline on myself? And if you find that you're putting undue pressure on yourself to get things done quickly or to get things done while overdoing it, invite yourself if you're a projector or just move out of that timeline, you know, like just remove the timeline let it go or push that due date out, you know, like by moving out that timeline or removing that timeline that helps alleviate that pressure, especially if it's one of those arbitrary timelines that you put on yourself. Another way to alleviate the pressure, it's possible that helping that changing your environment will help. And it's also possible that moving your body will help move some of that stuck and pent up energy in your root center. And my last big tip for alleviating that root center pressure is to allow yourself to invite yourself, to encourage yourself to live in the present moment. A lot of this root pressure comes from getting too far ahead of yourself and worrying about the future or looking back and, you know, feeling that like regret or feeling, you know, guilt from something that happened in the past. So by releasing that worry about the future and releasing some of that regret from the past and trying to just be in the present moment and trusting your path and trusting in the divine timing of your journey, trusting your evolution, and most importantly, trusting, trusting your timeline is the best way to alleviate that pressure. But again, it is definitely a practice. It is definitely something that you're going to have to come back to and continue to work on, but it is also very effective. The more present that you become, the easier it is to alleviate that root center pressure. All right. So before I wrap up, I want to actually walk you through quickly what to expect in this podcast series. As I mentioned, this is just the first episode of a six episode podcast series called The Pressurized Soulpreneur. So this episode is the foundation where I explained how you can experience pressure from these human design pressure centers from a human design perspective, how it impacts you, how to be aware of it, and how to manage it, mitigate it, or alleviate it. In this episode, I've talked about it in more general terms. Um, and this episode is the baseline for the next five episodes. And the next five episodes are going to build on this particular one. So starting next week in the next four episodes, I'm gonna be diving into the four key stages and inflection points in a small business owner or solopreneur's journey. How these pressures from the head center and the root center impact you specifically and uniquely at that stage and how you can navigate and manage them. In the sixth and last episode of this podcast series, I'm going to be discussing my own process for leveraging the pressures from these two centers in my business on a more practical and day-to-day -day level. I am super excited for this podcast series. It's going to be very thought-provoking, contemplative, 
and very relatable, I think, for all of you listening. So if aligning your business and your marketing strategy to your human design is something that's calling to you, you can take the first steps forward in my new free workshop series, Human Design Marketing Strategy and Business Alignment. This workshop series lays the foundation for creating and implementing an effective marketing strategy using your human design, a marketing strategy that aligns your unique energy so you can continue to build, grow, and scale your purpose-driven business with less force, less frustration, and less burnout. You can find the link below in the episode description. If you liked or resonated with what you heard today, make sure you share this episode with your own business besties, tagging me at Brie Couric, or leaving me a five-star review on your favorite podcast platform. In the next episode of the Frequency and Flow podcast, and the second episode of six in the Pressurized Soulpreneur episode podcast series, I'll be sharing and discussing the pressure around the first major inflection point that small business owners and soulpreneurs face and how to navigate it. And that is the pressure to monetize your passion and creatively and authentically express yourself. I'll see you there.